How does it feel to turn 30? It definitely feels so much different than when I turned 20. It feels like a lightning, I would say. Um, it feels so much different and in a good way. Question number one. An empowered woman is someone who's confident in her own skin. It took me a while, to be honest, to be comfortable in my own skin as a mom who got a bunch of stretch marks. An empowered woman is someone who works hard, wears whatever she wants, is whoever she is, does whatever she wants. Number two, I get inspired by so many different things. I get inspired by my children, by my family, when I pray, when I get to travel. I get inspired with the people that I work with. I'm very, very lucky. I feel like inspiration is truly everywhere. Number three, my greatest strength would be being an amazing mother. Number four, I don't think I have an unpopular opinion about women empowerment because I feel like it's a constant need for women to be always empowered like we always need to uplift each other as cheesy as it sounds um, it is necessary in whatever sector you work in i feel like it's just important to empower each other number five i wish i had known that not everyone's your friend and keeping a small circle is better than having a bunch of friends number six I think there's a lot of characteristics for knowing a good friend and one of them is who checks on you when you get quiet, who is there for you when you're at your worst and you're at your best. So those qualities are very important in friendships. Number seven, I think it's easy to make friends but it depends how you describe friends. There's, you know, work friends and then the small circle friends. You have to kind of categorize not in a bad way you know balance everything out number eight we definitely do it that's a sign of a real friendship because Nina and wedding all happy and then you know when something's going on don't waste your time talk about it fix it and then that's gonna create a deeper bond number nine life without my friends would be less colored Number 10, the most valuable thing I have to offer as a friend. My time and my reliability and my loyalty. What is my first memory of love? <laughs> Why is this so weird? But um, aside from high school crushes, my first memory of love is <laughs> pairing Barbie with Ken together. Number 12, I agree with that statement. That's all. That. <laughs> no, I cannot. <laughs> Number 13, how does my definition of love evolve through the years? I think my understanding just goes deeper um, beyond physical attraction, deeper than the surface. And knowing and being able to do and give your best to your partner. Number 14, the recent lesson I learned about love is to be graceful. Number 15, my advice for Zion and Kai about love is look inwards to not just look at the physicality of a person, but their personality, their values. How kind are they? Do they know about respect? Are they types of people that like helping each other? Number 16, the best thing about being a mother is hugging my kids, being able to care for them, seeing them fall asleep. I love watching them grow, you know, being there during their milestones. Number 17, what's it like being a boy mom? It's fun, it's chaotic, it's a uh, noisy. <laughs> and when the house is quiet, it's weird, but it's a lovely, beautiful ride. Number 18, what have I learned from my mom that I'm now applying to my children? In different ways, she shows her nurturing side through food, through worrying through always being there through being tough in the best way all those things that she's done for me i'm doing the same for my children and somehow in my own way as well 19 motherhood has changed me for the best it made me the best version of myself 
My goals for my children is for them to grow up to be God-fearing, kind, respectful. I always remind them the importance of appreciating the small things. 21. What's one lesson I learned from my childhood? That being an only child can be fun and cool. It made me independent. 22. What do I admire the most about my parents? The way they love each other. They never fought in front of me, which I think is very important um, and healthy. Number 23. Perks of being an only child. Getting all the attention, but sometimes, you know, the attention's too much. <laughs> learning how to embrace solidity and learning how to embrace being alone. I grew up entertaining myself. I did arts and crafts. I would sing and, and just keep myself entertained. 24. How do I give time for my family? I always give time for my family. That's my number one priority over my career or anything else. It's just a natural thing for me. Um, number 25, my opinion on having a complete family. Um, it's beautiful. Number 26, breakthrough moment in my career. I don't want to sound cheesy, but I feel like every opportunity that I decide to embrace or embark on in my career, I, I welcome it as a gift and I don't take advantage of it. For me, there's not like a big thing or a small thing, it doesn't matter. All work opportunities in my career, I feel, are all blessings and are all pente. Number 27, how do I avoid past mistakes? By not repeating them again and by growing from it. What skill would I want to continue working on in my career? I guess, aside from putting myself more out there, honing my, my creative side. I love dancing, I love singing, I love sketching, which is how we started the Casa Selma and Beat Selma collaboration through Doodles, during the pandemic, and the, the social media exchanges. 29, who do I turn to for guidance? God. I read the Bible and it gives me hope, it gives me strength, it gives me grace, it gives me everything I need. Number 30. I do not know what the future holds, but I know that it will be filled with blessings and joy. Of course, there's always going to be trials. That's part of life and the continuous growth. This has been Sarah Labati Gutierrez for Mega Up Close and Personal. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the Mega channel and hit the notification bell to get notified on new video releases. Bye!